Welcome to Goldfish on Games. He might have been a fish out of water, but James Pond is mean, green, and part machine as he takes on the surface world in his robo suit in this classic sequel, James Pond 2, codenamed Robocod. Which was developed by Vector Dean and published by Millennium Interactive in 1991. I have a few releases of the game, including my original big box Amiga version that managed to cram a huge number of levels into a single floppy disk the later CD32 release that added the customary video intro animation and CD music, as well as a few console releases. As you can tell, this is a game that really had legs, or at least flippers, as it hit a massive number of platforms over the years, including Amiga 1200, Atari ST, Sega Mega Drive, Commodore 64, Acorn Archimedes, MS-DOS, Game Gear, Game Boy, GBA, PlayStation, Master System, SNES, Nintendo DS, PlayStation 2, and more recently, the Switch. That's 17 platforms in total. Though some of the releases had dropped the two from the name and just called it James Pond, codename Robocod. Most likely, as by this point, most buyers had no idea of the much less well-remembered first game. Now, if we start up the CD32 version, we get possibly the most British animated cartoon intro possible. Somewhere deep below the ocean waves lies the top secret headquarters of FI5H. Reporting for duty is FI5H's top agent. James Pond is licensed to kill. Above or below the waves, Pond's sharp shooting and lightning reflexes never let him down. No mission is impossible for Pond, but he'll have to be quick off the draw to defeat his arch enemy. Dr. Maybe. Get ready. James Pond is back. Which tells us absolutely nothing about the story of the game or even sets anything up. It leaves it for the older intro to do that for us. Now, what you might not realize when you're watching this intro is the fact that it's actually introducing its product placement. That's right, this game was sponsored by, of all things, Penguin Biscuits. That's right, you've got to p -p -p pick up a penguin as that's how you complete the levels. And this branding had absolutely no impact on me whatsoever. Well, If you've ever played a platformer in your life, you will feel right at home with this game. Movement is fast and fluid, and you have to jump on the enemies to kill them. But if you crouch when you're landing on them, you'll do double damage, which is a nice touch, as many enemies will actually take multiple hits to kill. And with a little bit of skill, you can actually end up juggling yourself on top of the larger enemies to take them out. But it won't take too long until you're introduced to the party piece of the robo suit, its stretching ability, which allows you to extend more or less indefinitely all the way up the screen. And if you hit the right type of edge, you'll grab onto it, else you'll just have to shrink back down before you can move, as there's some services that you'll end up passing through and others that you can't hold onto at all, which actually includes the very top of the level. And you should always be careful where you stretch, as while you don't take damage while you're using the expando suit, if a baddie happens to hit your exposed middle, you'll shrink down faster than jumping into a bath of cold water. All other regular interactions with the enemies will cause you to take damage. And you can find out how many lives you got and how much damage you can take by looking at the face at the bottom of the screen, which will get increasingly more angry as your lives go down, but if you want to know exactly how many lives you got, just count the fingers. Your health bar is shown as the number of batteries he's holding in his other hand. And while it's not great to count at a glance, you can at least tell when you're running short. In most levels, you're going to have to find the hidden penguins before you can get to the exit. Though, in some, it's a pretty much straightforward classic platform, where you just have to find the exit pole. But be careful, as some of those are actually psych outs that will end up restarting the level rather than taking you on to the next one. Because of the collection nature of the game, you end up having two main types of levels. You have the open style ones, where you're going to have to search around to find those annoying penguins, and the other ones which are pretty much straightforward go from A to B. Though there are a few that try to mix it up, where you'll have semi-open areas between routes. But that doesn't mean they don't have time for your favourite tropes in platforming. We have auto-scrollers, which do absolutely nothing to buck the trend of being the least light level type. And then you have the water levels, which Pond takes to, well, like a fish to water, really. 
and end up being actually pretty enjoyable, to be honest. It's certainly not the worst underwater levels you'll ever play. And as the levels grow in size and complexity, you'll be thankful for the mid-level checkpoint system. Just walk into these poles to trigger them. The levels tend to be quite colourful with unique tile work and enemies to the zone you're currently in. But you will also come across common obstacles and environmental objects such as large springs, elevators, one-way floors and cannons that will make progress even more fun. And just to keep with the sweetie theme, there are some levels made out of jelly, or jello, that will have you bouncing around like crazy. And then, just as you're getting into a nice groove, you'll be tasked with the flipped levels, where everything is upside down. And with so many versions and variations of the game, not all of them have these more crazy level designs. Broadly, they fall into two main camps. There's what I call the classic games, these were all ported from the original Amiga version in some way or another, and mostly contain the same graphics and levels, though some have more than others, and these tend to have the more crazy level designs. And then, for a lack of a better word, is the remake for the PlayStation, in which they added a new intro and then redid or touched up the various sprite and tile artwork. And you might think it has all the same levels when you see that the castle layout is almost identical, but almost every single level is brand new, and this has become the base for any new port of the game that you'll find today, which includes the poorly done Switch release. The Penguin branding was completely removed and now Pond has to rescue elves with bombs strapped to them. And they put the power of the PlayStation to good use with these new effects such as the fancy lighting, but it seems it wasn't quite strong enough to be able to handle some of those auto-scrollers or more insane level designs. And after growing up with the Amiga version, I might be a bit biased but I do prefer those original levels. Thankfully, no matter which version you get, you've got some backup to help you against those terrifying foes in the form of a few vehicles, such as the car, complete with crash helmets, which allows you to move around faster and jump further. The aeroplane, where you can tick to the skies, but you'll still have to be careful how you hit the enemies. And then, there's the top secret and deadly bathtub. Not only does it keep you clean, but it's also able to float and is a deadly weapon in the hands of Pond. There are also a number of pickups that range from the good, the bad, to the indifferent. Pick up a star and you'll get more health. Pick up an ank and you'll get an extra life. Or if you're finding the level a bit difficult, then try finding a robo suit which will make you invincible for a short period of time. And when you think there's an area that's too high for you to get to, and you just can't stretch your way up there, then look for a set of wings that will help you fly to where you need to go. But do be careful when you're picking up items, particularly if it's ones that you've just pushed out of a box because if it's the bottle of poison, it will actually hurt you and you'll lose some of your health. And then you get ones that really don't seem to do anything all that useful, such as the television, that'll just make it black and white for no real reason. Or the umbrella, which, okay, will slow your descent, but you don't get hurt anyway. And if you do fall from a great height when you duck down, all that happens is the screen shakes in this really great earth-shattering sequence. Why would you want to stop that? Though really, most of them, all they really do is give you points. Which, if you're looking for a high score, I guess that's useful. But most of the time, eh, you can just skip them. But you will need all these various power-ups at some point in the game, as there's a huge number of levels. The exact number differs from edition to edition, but they tend to range from 60 to 100. So there's a lot of content for you to get through. Though not all the levels will be easy to find, as there's hidden exits in some of the levels, as well as a few extras that you'll find in the hub world itself. If the number of levels or the life cap seem a little harsh, there's always cheats, and there's some really clever ones built into Robocod. When you start at the castle, you will spot this row of icons that include a tap, cake, earth, apple, and a hammer. Which, if you pick them up in the correct following order, cake, hammer, earth, apple, tap, it spells out the word cheat and unlocks all the levels and makes you invincible for up to 10 minutes. There are also a few other item combos in the game, 
such as when you spell out the word lives, you can get infinite lives. I think this is more fun than a random button combo or a word that you have to type in, though there are cheats like that in this game as well. Now, unlike many other games that I review, finding a copy isn't all that hard. Well, if you want one based on the modern iteration, it's pretty easy, as you can find it on the digital stores of a number of console platforms. But if you want the classic edition, it's still not too difficult to find a second-hand copy, as it hits so many different platforms, there's quite the range to choose from. And there we have it, Robocod. A fun, quirky, and enjoyable title, but please be careful if you pick up one of the later editions, as to be honest, they're not all that well put together. You're much better off finding either the original 16-bit versions, or the PlayStation or DS version, as I think they're the best. And until next time, I was the Goldfish, that was a fish that wasn't going to accept a battering, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel, as it really does help it grow. Or, you can check out some of the other videos that I've made through the links on the screen right now. Thank you, and goodbye.